Hi, boys and girls. I would like you to welcome my new partner, Sarah Star Coder. Give her a hand of applause. Well, thank you for that welcome. I am, I think you meant round of applause, but that's okay. Hi, boys and girls. It is so, so nice to meet you. I am so excited to be here. Today, boys and girls, we kind of sort of flipped the script. We sent Mr. McLaughlin out on assignment. He is going to be looking for some, what do we call, geocaches. And Sarah and I will be telling you what geocaches are, how do you do this geocaching thing, and all that sciencey stuff. I'm going to leave that up to Sarah to explain some of that. Okay, I am I can take care of that. First, before we talk about geocaching, we have to talk about something called GPS. GPS is Global Positioning System. It's a satellite-based navigation system made up of at least 24 satellites. Now, GPS works in any weather conditions, anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, and it's free. The Defense Department, USDOD originally put out the satellites in orbit for military use, but then they were made available for civilian use in the 1980s. The GPS satellites circle the Earth twice a day in a precise orbit. Each satellite transmits a unique signal and orbital parameters that allow the GPS devices to decode and compute the precise location of the satellite. GPS receivers use this information and trilateration, I'll show you what that is in a couple minutes, to calculate a user's exact location. Essentially, the GPS receiver measures the distance to each satellite by the amount of time it takes to receive a transmitted signal. With this distance measurements from a few more satellites, the receiver can determine a user's position and display it electronically to your device, whether it's your phone, your watch, your Garmin device in your car, or a special GPS device. Now let's talk about trilateration. That's when you have the satellite measuring its distance to whatever is receiving the signal. That means for one satellite, you're somewhere on a giant ball. When you take two satellites, you have two balls intersecting, which means you're somewhere on a circle. When you have three balls intersecting, that means you're somewhere along two points that could possibly be your location. Now, how do you narrow that down? Pretty simple. It's the location that's on the Earth, because the other one is in space. And we all know there's no air in space, so that would make it really hard to breathe. I am, that is a terrible joke. You are so corny. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Ugh. So now that we know some things about GPS, it is time to look at geocaching. Mr. McLaughlin is on assignment looking for a geocache treasure right now. Let's tune in and see what his first treasure is, and then we'll talk about how do we find geocaches and what are geocaches. Hi, everybody. I have the audio working. I'm just tuning into the video. Yes, Here we Mr. go. Blackland, I think it's I coming we are through now. Your video feed Live right now. from the car. Here's uh, I Tommy. I really have to stop doing things like that. So I am driving to my first geocache location. If you know the area, you might be able to figure out where I am. I will, of course, post the GPS locations of the geocache. Location to see if we can find something. So here we are pulling in. Some of you might recognize this spot. So I think I may have found our hidden thing here. So let's look, see if we can find it together. 
I'm looking at these rocks. And these rocks look kind of Oh, flat. I see it. It's right there under the rock. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we may have found the treasure. There's oh, the number. I'm so excited. What did you find? We have the log. Let's see what else we have. We have an earring. Oh, I want the earring. I want the earring. Some pencils. Fire. All the stuff has to be put back. That's the way a geocache works. Now be quiet. A bracelet. A bottle cap. A rock. And open up. The log book. Look at all the people who have found this and signed it. Let's see. So today is the 10th. Let me leave uh, on the camera. Mr. McLaughlin, the camera's going crooked. We can't see. Nine. Yeah, you're gonna need to fix that. Twenty. Twenty. And we're gonna write innovation class. Hopefully, if you come and look, you can find the log. And we can see that there's another sheet of log and more log. All the people who have signed it. put this in and attach it. We'll put ours on top. As you can see. Now we gotta take it and put it back where we found it. Cover it back up with this rock. Okay, our first geocache. So now we've seen Mr. McLaughlin do his geocaching. We are all ready to go and geocache ourselves. Let's go. Not so fast, I am. We have to do a little bit more work first to find out what exactly is geocaching and how we can do geocaching responsibly. So let's open up an internet browser and go to the website that has all the information about geocaching. Geocaching.com. Sarah, that sounds like a great idea. It looks like there's some videos here we could watch and learn about geocaching and how to do it responsibly. Geocaching is an any day, anytime adventure that can take you to amazing and beautiful places or even just to a place in your town that you've never been before. There are millions of geocaches worldwide. There are probably even some near you right now. Yes, you. To start finding them, just get out your phone or GPS. Go ahead. I'll wait. Then, Create a free geocaching account and you're ready to go. The way it works is simple. Just choose the geocache you want to find, then navigate to its location. What you're looking for varies. Geocaches come in different sizes, shapes, and difficulties. Geocaching isn't always easy, so it's okay to get excited when you discover the cache. After finding it, sign the logbook. Trade knickknacks if you want and log your find online. When you're done, just put the geocache back where you found it and you're on to the next one. Uh, hey, it's the other way. There's an adventure happening all the time, all around you. Become a part of it at geocaching.com. when you find a geocache, it'll be filled with seemingly random items. You don't have to trade, but if you do, there are a few guidelines. Trade equal or up? Everything should be legal and safe. Food and
and smelly items might attract animals. And animals don't even know how to geocache. Instead of being kept like trade items, trackables move from geocache to geocache. They come in all shapes and sizes, and they all have a unique tracking code and the words trackable at geocaching.com. Before you take one, make sure you know what to do with it. And if you're not quite sure, leave it for the next geocacher. Even if it's super cool looking. To the untrained eye, geocaches and geocachers might look a little suspicious. While you're out searching, keep an eye out for curious onlookers. If people are nearby, be as nonchalant as possible. Geocachers are known for being environmentally friendly. That means not trampling plants and animals and respecting natural areas. We even have a thing called cash in, trash out, aka Sido. It means that whenever you're out geocaching, pack out any trash you see. This one's easy. Just think before you geocache. Come prepared, obey local laws, and keep yourself safe. I think we have time for one last check-in with Mr. McLaughlin to see if he has found any other geocaches. Mr. McLaughlin, are you there? Hi, I am Sarah. Yep, I'm turning on the video now. I am just crossing a bridge. Okay, so for this cache, we are going to drive across the bridge, but not the bridge you think. So this one is a little hard to find. You have to go down a road that looks like it's a dead end road, but it does lead to a park. And we're gonna go look for this geocache now to see if we can find it. It's done by the Girl Scouts. Okay, okay so we're outside now. And I'm going to go and see if I can find it. Let me go flip the camera around. Look up to this pole. And let's see what we got here. It just looks like a pole. What's this? This looks interesting. Oh, look at that. It looks like we have found the geocache. Let's see what's in here. There's all kinds of things in here. I don't think the whole pole comes up. I guess that's just to keep it from falling all the way through. So here's the log. Let me go sign the log and then put everything back. The log, we're gonna sign it. Looks like we're number 33. There we go, we signed it. Innovation, Mr. McLaughlin, and this was inside of it. And this was inside, so we're going to put it all back in and put it back up. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for having me. Yep, Mr. McLaughlin should be on his way back and ready to show us some more about how do we make geocaches. Have a great day. Bye for now. Well, hi, boys and girls. I am back from my geocaching journey. That was so, so much fun. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is just switch this shot to a closer shot so you can see my board and see me better. And I'm also going to turn on my screen so you can see my computer. There we go. That's great. Okay, so today we are going to talk more about geocaching. And what I'm going to do is show you how geocaching works here locally. And maybe, if you would like, you can create your own geocache. So we go to the geocaching website, which is geocaching.com. Pretty easy to find. 
And if we want to find a geocache, what we do is we click on play and we click on view map. And now you can see I get a map of the area of all the different geocaches. And there's a whole bunch of them. You can see the ones that I looked for. The happy face means I found it. The sad face, I didn't find it. There was nothing there. So sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. If you look, you can see there's a listing of them here on the side. There's a couple question mark ones. Those are special ones. This one's called Lost in Space. It looks like somebody found this back on 3-8-2020, so it's probably still there. We could find out a little bit more information about this one. Ooh, it's some kind of geocaching odyssey. Wow, what must be there? All of a sudden, you run into a meteor storm which damages your hyperdrive. The only thing you have is a piece of astronaut ice cream and a cryptic list of space terms that the robot prints out and gives you. Wow, this sounds really complicated. So some of them are really complicated puzzles and adventures. Some of them are just finding stuff. So this one looks like somebody found a full year ago. And this one is looks like it's the Honey Hollow Nature Preserve. Oh, and look, it's about finding foxes. And then we could go maybe one that's closer to the school. Let's see what else we can find here. So here's the school. Let's search this area. There's a couple more questions. Question mark ones. Oh, there's one right here calling all hogs. Let's see, this was found last August. Let's see what's there. Oh my gosh. It looks like it's a lottery ticket. Oh my gosh. And there's a decryption key. Now FTF starts with means first to find. So you could be the first person to find him. And once you find him, there's something special in there. So we can go around all over New Hope and find all kinds of geocaches. And search for some really cool stuff. Now remember, you don't want to take what's there without placing it back. And if you create, um, if you find what's called a trackable, if you don't know what to do with it, then you should leave it. And as you get more experienced with being a geocacher, you'll find more trackables and you'll understand a little bit better what you have to do with the trackable. But essentially you have to put it somewhere else and move it to another geocache. And if you're not willing to move it to the right geocache, then that could be um, break the chain and people will get kind of upset and it will ruin the fun for other people. So how do you go ahead and create your own geocache? Well, what I have, and I'm gonna turn on my other camera to show you, is I actually went out and I purchased an official geocache kit. So let's see what's inside here. So here is the official geocache kit I bought from the company's website. Now you could make your own kit. You could use something, a waterproof container like um, they did in the other video. It was like a peanut butter container that was all washed out and marked. So as long as it's waterproof and you can hide it well. So in this kit, I have a pencil. Now, a lot of times if you put the markings on the site and you tell person to bring their own pencil. That's a good idea. This one has that FTF reward. So it means, hold up to this camera, first to find. So when I hide this, if you're the first one to find it, then you get to keep this reward. 
Then there's a couple other things. There's a compass, which is useful if you want to find your way around. And then there's a travel bug. That's one of those trackables. So there'll be two trackables in here, and hopefully we can get them to move around to other geocaches. And then there's a pin, which I might leave in there. And then there's the little logbook that people can write and fill out their information. And maybe I'll put a special little note, a message just to say hi. The whole thing is put together in this little sealable container that is waterproof. So once you have your geocache all built, it is time to go and hide it. So how do we go about hiding our geocache? So I have a little video for us to watch about hiding a geocache. The first step to hide any geocache is to make sure that you're ready. I'm good to go. Let's hide this thing. Boom, hit. Slow down there, champ. Hiding a geocache takes time and commitment so that geocachers can find it for years to come. A good way to gain experience is by finding more geocaches. Finding about 100 geocaches before your first hide will help you figure out what you like and don't like, and gather some great ideas. Woo! I know so much more now. What's next? Next up, let's find a spot that's right for your geocache. What about right here? This spot looks pretty cool. Apparently, you're not the only one who had that idea. Geocaches have to be at least a tenth of a mile away and in a place where geocaches are allowed. How about this tree nut? It's safe, easily accessible, and perfect for a geocache. It looks like a great spot, but your container is a little lacking. What we have here are a few examples of great geocache containers. Whatever you choose should be durable, waterproof, and well-labeled. Add a logbook, and you're good to go. Hmm, decisions, decisions. After you make your pick, we'll go hide it. When placing your geocache, make sure you get accurate coordinates, take note of the difficulty and terrain ratings, and remember your geocache size. Then, you're ready to plug it all in on geocaching.com. Alright, I put in all the info and wrote a pretty sweet description. And don't forget to add a helpful hint. Got it. Now what? Now you send in for review. Review? By who? Hi! A community volunteer, someone like me, will take a look at your geocaching's details and see if it fits within the guidelines and if everything looks good, it will be published. Awesome, thanks. Then what? Then it's just keeping your geocache in tip-top shape and enjoying all of the geocaching love that rolls in. There's plenty more to learn about hiding a geocache. Just click the link to learn more. And if you want to find the geocache that I just hit, here's the GC code. So that is uh, the process of going through and hiding your geocache. Now you could create your own. It doesn't have to be something that you buy from the store. It could be, like I said, the peanut butter container. It could be some paper that's rolled up in there for a logbook. It could be a couple little trinkets that you put in there that people can find. Maybe you create your own FTF, first to find prize, and leave that in there for somebody to take. And that would all go in the description on the website. You have to make sure you're safe and you pick a safe location and probably do it with your parents. I wouldn't necessarily go out roaming around in the woods and hiding something myself. I would definitely bring somebody with me. So that is our lesson for today. I hope you had as much fun as I did making the lesson, and I hope you guys get a chance to try some geocaching, maybe finding some geocaches or going out and making your own geocaches yourself. The one I showed you, I will definitely be hiding, and I'll post the uh, GPS coordinates so you can go out and find it. Bye for now.